We're going to be talking about some heavy and sensitive topics today. It's specifically about the Me Too movement that's going on in Taiwan right now. It started with this very powerful phrase, let's just not let this go, okay? This phrase was from a Taiwanese Netflix movie called Wave Makers. To give you more context, a mentee was experiencing some sexual harassment in the workplace. So she went to her mentor and told her about it. The mentor's response was, okay, let's not let this go. Even though the mentee has experienced other people saying, okay, let's just let this Let's go, sweep it under the rug, let's not worry about it, don't make it into a big deal. But what this mentor said was so powerful and just right. She wanted to stand by her mentee. That's how it all started. They use that phrase as a rallying point to support their stories. And it's not just women, it's men too. They're now coming out and sharing their experiences. Today, we're going to be talking more about the entertainment industry and how that is going down right now with some of the Taiwanese celebrities. It's a little delayed from the 2017 Me Too movement in the US, but people are now finally able to voice their opinions and experience about what has happened. As I mentioned before, it started with, oh, sorry. It started off with very powerful politicians, and now it's trickling down to the entertainment industry. There has been numerous number of celebrities that have been accused, but we're going to focus on three different celebrities that have been investigated by the police. When we think of the Me Too movement, typically we think of women and their grievances, but the first example is by a male. He's a male victim? Yes, a Taiwanese influencer, Raku. He came out and accused Aaron Yen. Raku is an influencer? Yeah, he is. Is he really famous? I don't think so. He came out and exposed the relationship that they had back when he was 16, a minor, and Aaron was 31. If you don't know Aaron Yen, he is a famous actor, singer, idol in the Taiwanese entertainment industry. Allegedly, Aaron had forced sex on Raku and he filmed it. And there's been a number of times when Aaron filmed the sexual activities that they were having without Raku's consent. This happened back in 2017 and in 2018, all these films and videos leaked out to the public. Aaron said this wasn't intentional, it wasn't my fault. Apparently he had taken his phone for repair and that's how it got leaked. However, this was damaging to Raku. He was having issues, mental issues. He ended up dropping out of school for three years. Raku came out with this and he wanted to do a press conference. Supposedly at some point, Aaron had sent gang members to threaten Raku to shut up and not go to the press conference or say this out loud. Gang members from a celebrity. I was talking to my dad about this and he's like, this is not uncommon. I was shocked. I mean, gang members, I'm sorry. I guess this happens very often. But Raku was like, no, I'm going to the goddamn press conference. Raku went to the press conference. It was just him and the media. But Aaron showed up out of nowhere, uninvited. He showed up. And he turned towards Raku and said, I'm sorry for the toll that I has taken on you. I apologize. And he bowed. He bowed. And while Aaron was saying this, Raku's head was down because he wasn't expecting it, you know? And he had to take a break for 10 minutes after Aaron appeared. I'm sure they haven't seen each other and it was taxing. This is very emotional. I guess when you're confronted with the person that did this to you, it's very difficult. Yeah. Raku didn't take his apology. He said it wasn't very sincere. He only just apologized maybe for the media's purposes and for his image. Aaron Yang got fined 500,000 new Taipei money. That's about 15,500 USD. That seems very low for like a sexual abuse case. Apparently it's very common in Taiwan that someone gets fined and you are still under investigation and then if anything more comes out then you might get more fined or go to jail or something and this is going to happen for two other celebrities i'm going to talk about the second one a female netizen named zofia accused mickey huang of sexually harassing her mickey huang is a popular tv host in taiwan he's been around for quite a while so he's known as the veteran of the tv hosts in taiwan Zofia alleged Mickey had taken her somewhere 
and in the car, he forced a kiss on her. He had asked her to do some sort of photo shoot for an art exhibit. And Zofia was like, yeah, I'm, I sure, why not? And he said, well, there is one condition, which is you have to be topless, but your bare back will be facing the camera. They went to the hotel and she started doing this photo shoot with her top bare and back bare. Mickey had given her a mannequin and said, can you post with this mannequin? in a sexual way. Zofia at the time was like, okay. And she tried. Mickey wasn't satisfied. He was like, okay, I'm not feeling what you're doing. Let me try something else. The next thing that happened was something that Zofia did not expect. Mickey took off his top and laid on the ground and said, pretend like I was that mannequin and do what you were doing to the mannequin. And let me remind you, they're both topless right now. She didn't know what to do. She felt really uncomfortable, but she just complied because she didn't feel like she could escape at the point. Zofia tried to do what he was saying. He said, touch my private part and pretend like you're licking it. So she did. That's messed up. When she made this post, people started reaching out to her. Other women started reaching out to her telling her about the encounters and the sexual harassment experience that they had with Mickey Huang. When this came out, Mickey Huang was like, I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry to everyone, to the public. His reaction after this was crazy. This was on a live broadcast. So he's been doing this for to like a lot of women over the years. Correct. I don't know if it's over the years, but he did it when he was young. So Mickey went on this live broadcast apologizing to the public and netizens and I guess Sophia and the victims. We don't know who he was apologizing to. What happens next is a little ridiculous. He started exposing 13 other celebrities in the industry about all the bad things that they did. I'm not talking about just sexual abuse or sexual harassment. He was telling and saying things like, that person had a drug abuse problem. That person did this. That person did that. He was like, if I'm going down, everyone else should be going down with me. I'm dragging them down. You think I did something bad? They did something bad. Wow. So maybe he's trying to shift the blame away. Exactly. He was trying to shift the attention to somebody else. So he started naming all these big name celebrities and everything that they did. One hour after the broadcast, he deleted the video. Then he took out a knife and sliced himself, wanting to commit a suicide. On camera? No, just right after, an hour later. So he cut his wrists? I don't know where he cut, but he sliced himself. Maybe he was trying to gain pity. Maybe he was trying to, again, draw the attention away. But he was like, I'm going to die. And I'm going to commit suicide because I deserve to die. He was taken to the emergency room. He is still alive. Mickey, too, got fined 350000 new Taipei money. That's about 11000 USD. So... What was he fined for? Sexual misconduct. But he's under a police investigation, so nothing has been confirmed. All these are alleged. It still seems like a very low amount of money for it sexual is. misconduct. It is. It's very low. But more could happen, we don't know. He could go to jail. This fine is like an initial fine that you put the money with the court. Once you are being charged for something, they would potentially return the money to you. And then you have to serve maybe a sentence or pay more money. This fine is a promise that you will cooperate with the police and you can't leave the country. But if you don't cooperate and you leave the country, then they take this fine and you won't get it back. I feel like for these celebrities, it's like a drop in the bucket. Oh yeah, of course. I think that's the issue. The victims are pissed. The next one is probably the most despicable one. A Taiwanese influencer, Anissa, who was sexually harassed by a comedian in Taiwan. His name is Nono. That's his stage name. She made a post supporting another woman who came out. She said, I also had experience with Nono, and this is what happened. I saw Nono as a big brother. And a lot of people within the industry saw him as the big brother. A friendly big brother. Daka. Who's this Nono guy? He's a comedian. He's quite famous. He's well known. Anissa thought that Nono was somebody that she could confide in. She told him she had an experience where she was sexually harassed by a manager of a baseball athlete. 
if someone came to tell you that, and let's say it's a friend, you would try to comfort the person or you would try to see, you know, if she wants to take any action. He did the exact opposite. He said to her, how can that person touch you before I got a taste of you? Then he slipped his hand into her underwear while trying to force a kiss on her. She was so stunned. He was like, don't you like this? And laughed. Wow, that's really messed up. That night, he took her to the park. He grabbed her, sat her on his lap, then proceeded to slip his hands inside her shirt, inside her bra, to touch her breasts and just everywhere on her body. Yo, that's ridiculous. This is right after she told him about that? Yes. He took full advantage of somebody who was in crisis. She escaped by making up excuse saying that she needed to go. And at the point, she was just so surprised. She didn't know what to do. She froze. And this was somebody that people looked up to in the industry, especially if, you know, you're just starting out and this is somebody who's been in the entertainment industry for a while, you would respect them, right? So she didn't know what to do. After, Nono would continue to harass her. Do you remember the Facebook poking? You can like poke somebody on Facebook and then you can poke back. Yeah, that's a while ago, right? Nono kept doing that to her. And every time he did, she was just trembling in fear. And she didn't want to say anything to anybody because people probably would have taken it the wrong way. When she came out with this on her post, Nono was asked about this. He said, I don't remember. If I don't remember, that means it didn't happen. What kind of excuse is that? The good thing is, because of this post and because of the power of social media, 20 other victims reached out to Anissa. Anissa was like, okay, I'm going to expose him and I'm going to hold a press conference. At the press conference, she said, if he doesn't remember the first or second victim, you know what? Let me help him remember these victims and all the other victims because I'm sure he will remember all of the 20 victims that he's harassed or sexually done something to. Anissa shares this one experience from a victim that was quite severe. This person also was somebody very new in the entertainment industry. She had gotten into his car because I think maybe they were driving somewhere. He did the same exact thing that he did to Anissa. He tried to force a kiss on her. The worst part was he took her to an underground garage, brought her to the bathroom and raped her. No consent. She was shocked. She couldn't do anything. Anissa shared another victim story. The victim was also raped. She remembers that day very vividly. But one thing that really stuck out was, Nono said, if I don't ejaculate, it doesn't count. That's ridiculous. Anissa alleged that Nono usually targets people who are young or people who are trying to get into the entertainment industry because those people are usually the ones that wouldn't say anything or they don't know how or when to go to the police, what's right, what's wrong. He took full advantage of that. But Anissa gave the victims a voice. She encouraged people. She wanted to share these experiences. She wanted to expose him because of all the despicable things that he was doing. Anissa did say, a lot of people didn't want to come out. When she did come out with the story and her experience, people were victim blaming. They were saying that it's probably because of the way you dressed. It's probably because you were too revealing. Why did you do that? Anissa said, I'm sorry. I choose what I want to dress. Just because I dress a certain way, that's not welcoming other people to do this to me. Apparently, photos of Nono touching women's thighs or conversation that he's had with women were getting posted online. So he was getting really exposed. Then Nono came out apologizing to the public, not the victims, the public, and saying that he's going to take a break from the entertainment industry. Netizens were really angry. And of course, the victims too. They were saying that, yes, you should get punished. You really need a severe punishment. And as one victim would put it, he should go to hell. At the end, 30 women have came out to talk about their story and what they experienced with Nono. Nono went under a police investigation. I think they searched his house for four hours trying to find evidence. 
he was fined five hundred thousand dollars new taipei money so fifteen thousand five hundred us dollars he is currently still under police investigation anisa said exactly what you said five hundred thousand dollars that doesn't mean anything after this all came out and with the me too movement Taiwan passed more anti-sexual harassment laws, specifically in the workplace. And this is still ongoing. People were saying that, well, that's only at the workplace. What about outside the workplace? The law is not perfect. No laws. Perfect. So everything is still progressing right now. We don't know what will happen and what's going to happen. So like at least this is a step in the right direction. Yes. I think more women now feel very empowered to come out and say something, especially when one woman comes out and share their experience and the person denies it, other women will come out and support her, whether it's encouraging her or just sharing their own experience with the person that they're talking about. I think Asian culture in general has like that mentality of just um, something bad happens, just put your head down and like move on with it oh for sure so this is definitely something good that came out of this even though it's a very tragic situation for these women when the news came out about what these celebrities were doing many people were shocked but some people weren't because they experienced it yeah i think people like celebrities and people in the government they take advantage of the power they have and they can like just pressure you to not say stuff and I'm sure there are still a lot of stories that are untold and people haven't came out yet because they're scared or something. Let us know what you think of these cases and what your opinions are on them and what you think their punishment should be. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more stories like these. Thank you for watching. Bye, everyone.